so what 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 have we been doing? We've been telling the truth. We've been telling that the United States is the empire of lies, that they have been going around the world, cooing sovereign nations, removing democratically elected leaders. And so here we are, finally, um, you know, John Bolton isn't the first to admit, we're gonna talk about McFaul, who also admitted it, but he's told Jake Tapper on CNN, one doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, well, Jack, Jake Tapper said that, and John Bolton responded with, I disagree with that as somebody who has helped plan coup, coups, uh, not here, but in other places, it takes a lot of work. So he's patting himself on the back for orchestrating coups, just, and so this proves all of us, including Julian Assange, who is currently facing 175 years in in jail for the crime of publishing documents that expose these war crimes. So they're admitting to this while censoring all of us and going after Julian Assange. And, and they're doing this because they can get away with it because they're in bed with these same YouTube and owned by Google. They're in bed with these uh, technocratic entities. So here it is, hear it from his mouth, evil Geppetto, Lord John Bolton himself. <laughs> the walrus. It's not an attack on our democracy. It's Donald Trump looking out for Donald Trump. It's a once in a lifetime occurrence. I don't know that I agree with you to be, to be uh, fair with all due respect. Uh, one doesn't have to be brilliant to attempt a coup. Uh, I disagree with that. As somebody who has helped plan coup d'etat, yeah. not here, but you know, other places, uh, it takes a lot of work. And that's not what he did. It was just stumbling around from one idea to another. Ultimately, he did unleash the rioters at the Capitol. As to that, there's no doubt. But not to overthrow the Constitution, to buy more time to throw the matter back to the states to try and redo the issue. And if you don't believe that, you're going to overreact. And I think that's a real risk for the committee, which has done a lot of good work, mostly when the witnesses good testify, work. not when the members are opining. Uh, it is invariably the case that when you go too far trying to prove your case, you undermine it. And I think you got to give credit to the intelligence. Oh, you missed it. The intelligence <laughs> of the American people, he oh, said. So. Yes. And I don't give a shit how often you hold the pen just because you feel like it makes you look smarter. Like, look at me, I'm a tough guy with a pen. And I'm talking, so you need to listen to me because I have a pen. That guy is so full of shit. What a narcissist he is to show you. Oh, no, it's, you know, it, it takes a, a lot of brains to organize these coups, fam. You got to find the right drone to try and whack Maduro and whatnot. And, yeah, I mean, the guy's been a war hawk for so long, and he's still pissed off that Donald Trump fired him. The whole mentality, oh, no, he's just from moment to moment what's going on. And this committee's done amazing work. This committee has been a joke. I said it this morning on the show. If Gordon Dimmick was here, he said, don't call that a kangaroo court because it's an insult to kangaroos. This thing is a freaking joke. There are no rules in this hearing. You could take a guy who knew something about another guy who knew something about a gal who knew something about another guy that saw something and you can put that on the witness stand for that person to tell the story like their star witness who heard from a person from another person that Donald Trump tried to take the wheel of the limo from the secret <laughs> Ted Cruz was it Ted Cruz I think it was Ted Cruz or no Ruby it was one of them I, I they they're interchangeable to me uh I think it was Ted Cruz who was was questioning uh and they were like oh we can't we can't answer that sir oh but can you say is, is the FBI was crazy? oh we can't answer that I mean they've admitted the FBI orchestrated this whole thing aside but yes to keep bringing up Donald Trump's name even now when Joe Biden's administration is literally sinking. And so, of course, him admitting this is a big deal because this is Pandora's box opening up because now they're saying, oh, yes, we, you know, I helped uh, orchestrate yeah. these coup d'etats. And OK, what are we talking about here then when he was enough? OK, so we're talking about the Venezuelan, the failed Venezuelan attempted coup where they're still right now at this moment recognizing Juan Guaido as he legitimate president, you know, the the interim president, the, the real president while going to Maduro and trying to get some deals on oil. And and it's hilarious that they're still doing that. But that was a, a failed coup attempt. You could talk about uh, the what else? What, the, the, the Bolivian coup as well. The, the U.S. backed Bolivian coup. You could talk about a plethora of other of other things. And now, of course, uh, there's uh, the Imran Khan situation is, is coming up. There's so many things that that uh, you can talk about. But you, we can go back to, of course, 
2014, the Maidan coup with mm-hmm. Victoria Newland and Jeffrey Pyatt. So everything that there's that he's saying, you know, pretty much legitimizes the things we have been saying and other journalists and and Julian Assange have been saying for for a long time. So this is again, this isn't the first time somebody admit, admits it though, but it's a big deal for I think a lot of people. It's funny on CNN that may may not have grasped this concept. Hello, this yeah. this is this is what we've been talking about for ages. Yeah, I shared now, a tweet, um, I shared a tweet from Johnny the other day too as well, um, which we'll show after this video too. But the Iraq War, Bolton, how influential he was yes. in that situation. He, I mean, he you know pushing from the bleachers. This guy goes all the way back to Reagan. You know, I mean, he's just there is not a war that's out there. And I've always considered him to be one of the most dangerous John Bolton because he's the smartest and the most mm-hmm. craftiest. You know what I'm saying? He's he's much better than, like, let's say, Bill Crystal, who had a debate with Scott Horton and was sweating like, you know, like Bobby Brown doing the interview about crack. Like I smoke crack. Like that's what Bill Crystal was doing. The walrus isn't like that. He's always, to me, been the one of the most smart, smartest craftiest guy out there. So when he said this, and I don't think he realized that this is a big fucking slip because it is a big slip because a lot of people are talking about it. Fam. Yeah. You know, yep. he opened up Pandora's box. And I think a lot of people have to realize this when it comes to the foreign policy, the United States, this is their foreign policy. They openly plan coups and take, you know, go in there and change governments at the behest of the corporations that are going to make money through resource extraction and austerity measures. End of story. You're being played. And Oz, if you just want to actually go to uh, just show Johnny's tweet, because it's about this, uh, this thing. Uh, Yeah, as somebody who helped 23. Yeah, 23. I just threw it in there. I'm so sorry. I mean, I'm making Oz. Yeehaw, cowboy. But I just want to share Johnny's tweet here because it was fire. He says, as somebody who has helped plan coups, not here, but other places. And that's what the walrus said. And Johnny put openly admitting to cooing murder and war crimes. And that's what it is. These coups aren't something simple, ladies and gentlemen. I know a lot of people are like, well, sometimes sanctions are good, Sam. It's necessary. Sometimes we got to remove these dictators. No, you're openly admitting to murder and war crimes. That's how much blood yeah. is on Bolton's hand. And he just confessed to it. While calling other regime regimes, well, other countries regimes, while <laughs> saying that Venezuela, Nicaragua, and Cuba are authoritarian, autocratic, tyrannical countries, hello, what do you call what you're doing? Yeah. You're trying to uh, <laughs> have control over everything, and that's and that's where we're at right now. The United States is getting exposed, which is why they're censoring all of us. This is all connected. They're getting exposed. They have to censor those who are doing the ex- exposing, especially with this Ukraine. Um, Russia conflict. Now, this isn't the first time, like I said, we got uh, McFall here, former uh, Russian ambassador, Michael McFall. I know. Who admitted this. And this is just a reminder. I believe we played this before, maybe at some we point. Did. Yeah, we did. We did. This is just juicy. I wanted to answer Mike's question and then pose one to the two of you. To answer my question, legitimate security interests, I believe the number one issue is, of course, the neutrality of Ukraine, and the other things would have to be negotiated. So Steve, Just let me, let me... Can we con- converse, or do we... We can converse if I can finish the sentence. Okay, all right. Um, I was told! I, I was... I'm paying attention to the Canadian rules. I was told we're supposed to interrupt. I was told that. I was told that by your judge. I'm going to get him on the stage. It's I'm funny. just paying attention to the rules here, I was here, told folks. to just have a lively conversation, <laughs> but never mind. Um, so... I think that would be, that's the first step. And there's obvious reasons why the Russians want this guaranteed by the United States. Rada keeps saying that this was impossible, it's never going to happen, it was off the table. You have but already <laughs> guaranteed Ukraine's security. You, you're picking up Mike's you're, 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 you're picking up Mike's habits. All right. Um, the, 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 in 2021, we kept reiterating that Ukraine was going to join. We kept saying that over and over again. So my, so my, so my, so my, so my, so our, our diplomats are lying. Yes. 
Oh, so. <laughs> yes, that's the real world, guys. Come on, I come get on. That. But, but you can. That's then, the and, real and yet, world. Wait a second. Our diplomats are lying all the time. Yet the Russians should trust them when they offer assurances. No, 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 no. And no, when no. we shouldn't. Uh, please, no. Go but here's my here's my question. If Ukraine membership in NATO is really realistically off the table, just not going to happen. Nothing for Russia to worry about. Why shouldn't NATO take it back? Say, we've rethought the matter. We no longer want to consider Ukraine for NATO membership. If it's never going to happen, why not do a very simple thing that might help unwind this? Because that would be an invitation for, for Russia to invade. And as you know, I Russia, already happened. the United States... I, I, I was the CIA director. We lied, we cheated, we steal, stole. It's like, we, we, had, we, had entire, we had entire training courses. And, and and people applauded, by the way, <laughs> fam. And that that was at the Nixon Library, I believe, over in California, whatnot. Mm -hmm. But it's just like ridiculous because that is the mindset. And I think that this there's something dangerous about this, fam. That they make this more out in the open. It, it makes mm -hmm. it more even more acceptable than it already is. Let's be honest, because you know you talk about a lot of the you know the conservatives out there who are now kind of trying to play like the anti-war the peace position compared to what the Democrats and Joe Biden are doing. We understand that they are okay with a lot of wars. They were okay with it when it came to Saddam Hussein and whatnot like that. And this rhetoric is sometimes just over accepted in my mind, rather than the pushback that needs to happen from the, the public. Yeah. And I don't think, I don't think the public really understand. I mean, a lot of the times some of the public knows this, but they're just, it's too much for them to process. And I, I'm not excusing it entirely, but at the same time, it's like if imagine finally coming to the realization your government is just a piece of shit that's <laughs> full of psychopaths that run it and they don't care about you and they're killing people all over the world. And they're admitting and they're laughing about it and they're they're telling you what they're doing because they can tell you because people will ignore that and be like, well, we have to protect American security. And that's what it's always been. It's always it's always been like that. I mean, they're laughing about this. They're laughing about the fact that they manipulate, they lie, that they they do this all the time. And this is an admission. And these admissions have happened throughout time. But people haven't done anything because they uh, if, if they're not aware, they're they're just so focused on something else or they don't want to believe that their government is doing this when there's so much like rhetoric that this is the best country in the world that you have freedoms and liberties and blah 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 and that's um, both on the liberal end you know that we we are a democracy and on the conservative end oh that we are this republic and you got the constitution well n neither of those things are true for, I for either of those people on the side of the aisle so yeah just an eye opener it, it just drives me crazy because you know where i stand on this all this stuff the other day by the way i was on the union of the unwanted and somebody was talking about uh, something being like a communist, you know, dream and whatnot. And I'm like, I wanted to just stop the person because the person was saying so many great things. But then when they get to this whole communism, socialism is hiding under the bed to come get you kind of mentality. I'm like, dude, you live in a capitalist system in a capitalist right. society. <laughs> and we're here on a platform because we've been deplatformed and demonetized and censored in your capitalist country, guys. What the hell is wrong with you guys? And I'm not even there advocating for communism but yet yeah i'm i'm gonna turn it into a communist